Today I want to talk to you about something that's very important, and that's carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is a huge issue, not just across the nation, but in, around the entire world. People die from carbon monoxide way too many. I don't have the statistics in front of me because they're changing constantly depending on what source, but it's an alarming number of people die from carbon monoxide poisoning. On top of people dying from carbon monoxide poisoning, there's a huge issue with people being poisoned from it, being sickened from it. There's a lot of people, if you look up the statistics, you can Google this, how many people are sickened from carbon monoxide in the U.S. alone is staggering that number. But on top of that, there's so many cases that it's misdiagnosed. People are having carbon monoxide poisoning and don't even know it. A lot of people are being sent home thinking it's the flu or some kind of a cold or even a winter cold that hangs on, but it's really carbon monoxide poisoning. So it's going to be a really big issue, and I want to talk about that. I want to bring this to light so that you can protect yourself and your family. Very little cost involved, very little effort involved, but that's what this video is going to be about today. Now, there's a book that I want to promote called Carbon Monoxide, A Clear and Present Danger. This is a fantastic book for anybody to read, but especially for HVAC people. If you're doing HVAC, also plumbing, water heaters, indoor air quality, this is the book you want to get. Also, the certification that goes with this book, which I recommend. The more certification, the more knowledge you have, the better off it's going to pay for you. But more importantly, for the homeowner, for the people. Carbon monoxide poisoning. England did a really interesting study recently, and they found out that a lot of people were having carbon monoxide poisoning, and they were misdiagnosed at the hospital. Well, a hospital finds somebody with low oxygen, well, they want to test the oxygen. They clip that little sensor on your finger, on your finger but that's not accurately giving you a measurement of carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide builds up in your body. It connects to the hemoglobin and it displaces the oxygen. So people think that if they check your oxygen level, it's going to be okay. But in reality, the only way to check that is to actually pull a blood sample, draw blood, or use a special instrument that you breathe into that's measuring this. How that's working is as you breathe carbon monoxide, it's building up more and more in your body. So even if you're breathing a very small amount, over time that's building up more and more in your body. Now the symptoms of that are going to be things like dizziness, you're not thinking very clear, you seem to be a little bit confused, hazy, also muscle aches, um, joint aches, you end up with coughing, a whole lot of symptoms, mainly flu-like symptoms, all these flu-like symptoms. So you get people that go to the doctor and they think, oh, the clinic, I'm just not feeling well, I'm sick, and they take off of work. And what do they do? They spend more time at home. And at home is where most people end up with carbon monoxide poisoning. So you end up going back home, getting sicker and sicker in that same environment. Some people have spent a good part of their lives breathing in and being sick with carbon monoxide and never realize it's an issue. When you get above 35 parts per million, that's where it's considered a really a safe issue, a huge safety issue. That's where usually the fire department comes out, they evacuate the house, things like this. So you want to make sure you're well below that. Even breathing a small amount of carbon monoxide over time builds up and have long-term health effects. The study in England and the UK, they found out that a lot of people had long-term disability because of the carbon monoxide that they breathed. That's alarming. Not only that, they found out in that same study, and that study is in this book, they found out that these people had been misdiagnosed. Some people uh, thought that their house was safe because they had somebody service their equipment, uh, and they didn't check for it or didn't check for it properly. They didn't have the kind of safety equipment to inspect themselves. So it's a huge issue, a growing issue. So next, let's talk about what is carbon monoxide. And it's a byproduct of combustion, incomplete combustion to be exact. But any gas burning or fuel burning appliance in your house, anything that has a flame can cause, that potentially can cause carbon monoxide. So a gas stove, a gas water heater, a gas furnace, any of those things, especially those little, those little uh, heaters in the side of the bathrooms that, uh, I don't know if they even still make them or not, but those are notorious for putting out carbon monoxide. A really big one is a fireplace. Backdrafts and fumes coming back from that fireplace can put in carbon monoxide. But one thing that a lot of people don't think about is even if you have an all electric house, you can have an attached garage. So many houses now have attached garages. You're driving your vehicle into that garage. That's a huge issue for carbon monoxide poisoning. When you first start that vehicle up, it's putting out the highest number of carbon monoxide. That fills the garage. Even if you start the car and immediately back it out of the uh, carport or immediately out of that garage, it's putting out a tremendous amount of carbon monoxide. If your walls between the garage and the house are not adequately sealed, that carbon monoxide can drift into the house and cause intermittent CO pollutions. There's even been people that started a car, left it in the garage with the door open, 
ended up with carbon monoxide poisoning and people had even died from that. So I recommend anybody that has a fuel burning appliance of any kind in their house, a fireplace, or even an attached garage to be checking and monitoring for carbon monoxide for their own safety. So let's talk a little bit about carbon monoxide alarms. First, we'll start out with an alarm. Uh, alarms better than nothing. At least if you have some kind of alarm, you're being protected. So this is a basic, simple carbon monoxide alarm. We just picked it up at one of the big box stores. Um, and it's got a little light on here, the little alarm, comes with the batteries that go with it. But what I wanna do is point out the numbers that's on the back of this box. So if you look in the back of this box, it says carbon monoxide, this sounds at 70 parts per million. That's a huge number, 70 parts per million, and it must alarm within 60 to 240 minutes. That's a very high amount of carbon monoxide. So if it has 70 parts per million between an hour to 240 minutes, then this thing's gonna finally go off. Now we talked about breathing a low level of carbon monoxide, builds up in your body and can cause long-term issues. Well, this guy right here is not gonna sound off until it's at a very high level. So let's compare those levels. If we look at ASHRAE, the American Society for Heating Refrigeration Engineers, they say uh, 62-89, nine parts per million over 24 hours. If we look at the EPA, they also say nine parts per million, but over an eight hour period. OSHA also has it at nine parts per million over an eight hour period. Action levels at 35 parts per million. So if we figure those very low levels, this is better than nothing, but if this alarm is going off, that's a huge safety risk. You need to be evacuating the house, getting out, getting fresh air. So at 150 parts per million, it'll sound off between 10 minutes to 50 minutes. And at 400 parts per million, it'll sound off between four to 15 minutes. Now the test that they, they've done in the past had to do with miners uh, back in the 40s and also some of the military testing they did back in the early 70s. These were healthy young men that they did these tests on. But now think about somebody uh, like a, a female that has a different body weight uh, situation or a children in the house or elderly people or even anybody in that prime age that has some kind of underlying condition. All of these are way more successful. They could be having long-term health effects and this alarm right here is never gonna go off. Now, because it says alarm, it's not gonna sound off for those high levels. So you're probably thinking, well, why is that? That's crazy. And the reason is it started back in specifically Chicago where they started promoting carbon monoxide alarms. There's a lot of stuff they didn't know at the time. So a lot of people were having these carbon monoxide alarms. Well, when the winter came around, the first responders were running themselves to death trying to get to all these calls. They assumed that it was being nuisance calls, or it was going off incorrectly. So they changed the standards to where it wouldn't go off until it was at a much higher level. Little did we know that it was really because they were being poisoned by carbon monoxide and it was a way bigger issue than anybody realized. So just because you change the alarm sound points doesn't mean you're uh, making anybody any safer. So that's why it has it, to prevent nuisance calls. And there's a lot of people in the industry trying to change that UL listing to get that number dropped back down. But that is an alarm. It's better than nothing. But I wanna bring to your attention something that is much better in my opinion and uh, from all the research that I've done. And it's a low level CO monitor. What this is gonna do is gonna monitor the CO in the house. So it's gonna have a little digital readout right here. It's gonna tell you, you get up to about 10 parts per million, it's gonna start flashing a light, sound an alarm to let you know, hey, there's an issue. Doesn't mean you have to immediately evacuate the house, but it says, hey, there's a problem and you can solve it way before you end up with that life-threatening issue. Plus, if you're seeing consistent carbon monoxide issues in your house, you can get that corrected. You can also identify intermittent carbon monoxide issues. For example, if you're having in the morning carbon monoxide, uh, high levels of CO in the house, you can start addressing that. It's only happening in the morning. Let's look at what conditions are making that happen. So a low level CO monitor is what I recommend. Now it's called a monitor. They're not allowed to call this an alarm, even though it will sound off, because for it to be an alarm, it has to have the high ratings over a high amount of time. So we wanna promote the low level CO monitor. And there's many different kinds of these. You can get these at many of the hardware stores now. Here's an example of one. It's a Kittle brand carbon monoxide monitor. Notice it doesn't say alarm anywhere. It does have a digital readout beside it. it has a test and um, a peak level so you can record what the highest level was. And it's, it's nice to have. I personally prefer this brand and this is the reason why. The Defender carbon monoxide alarm has a built-in battery and sensor. 
any carbon monoxide alarm, any one of the alarms and monitors, these sensors start to wear out over time. They become less sensitive. So this one here is, I think it's five years, that sensor is gonna be bad. So what they do is they build a battery that lasts the same amount of time as the sensor. So when the sensor starts to go bad, the battery's bad, you replace the whole entire thing. That way you're not accidentally putting in new batteries in a device that doesn't work anymore. So I could continue to put in new batteries, this sensor would be dead, and nobody knows the last time it was checked. With this guy right here, once this battery's, battery is bad, we know to replace the whole thing, that sensor's not gonna work. That's a very safe, easy way of doing it. Uh, you can get these at True Tech Tools. I have zero affiliation with Defender, with True Tech Tools. What I love about True Tech Tools is they offer training, continuing education in the field, and there are people in the field. It's not just some big store somewhere. It's people that actually care about the industry, and I've personally used these monitors, and I really like them a lot. So that's why I like a low-level seal monitor. Let's talk about a few other little options. If you're doing any work in customers' houses, not just HVAC people, we're talking about uh, plumbers, we're talking about people that do carpentry work, painters, anybody going in and out of houses, I recommend you having a personal low-level CO monitor. Uh, a lot of companies now, a lot of cities and um, places require their inspectors to have one of these. It's a personal CO monitor. So what this is gonna do, it's gonna sound off if the levels around me get too high. I wear this, especially in the winter, uh, you sh I should be wearing it all year round, but I've walked in the restaurants before and had this go off. I've walked in the homes before and had this go off. So this is a very important issue. One of my students, one time they were working uh, and they had a boiler nearby that had put out a ton of carbon monoxide. Somebody had fallen off a ladder, somebody else had passed out, and the boss then went and made sure everybody, every one of the employees had one of these personal seal monitors because that safety issue could have been prevented. If this would have been going off, they would have been protected or at least knew, hey, there's something wrong, let's get out of here and get it tested and get that problem solved. Um, another big issue with these is there's two kinds of these. There's a huge argument in the industry over which one's better. I'm saying, you know, you can pick your battles on that, get one, have one of these, clip it on your belt, every day you go to work, every day, even on your, your personal life, keep this with you, it's gonna help monitor you. It's really helpful also when you go camping, uh, you're driving around, your, your camper can build up with CO, or you're cooking, you get the little heater going, and this right here has gone off several times when I've been out camping, and I know, hey, let's open the doors, let's get some fresh air in. So it's amazing how many times that you, uh, this has saved me, and it can also save you. If you're not testing, you're guessing. So that's an important issue. Now when it comes to testing for customers' houses, I'm not gonna take any of these. Even my personal monitor, it's not accurate enough to go to a customer's house and check to see if they have CO. What you're gonna to wanna to do is use a single gas analyzer. For example, this is one of my first ones that I had. You can take this around. You can accurately check for the CO levels in the house. And I'm not just gonna check one area, I'm gonna check over the entire house. Uh, another option is the Backrat brands. They have a full combustion analyzer. You can do a full combustion analysis, which is a whole separate course on the gas burns to see how it's burning. And they make these that are also individual gas. So you can check just for carbon monoxide in a house. One last thing I wanna talk about is carbon monoxide. Is it, does it rise? Does it fall? Is it heavier? Is it lighter? And the answer is yes. So it depends on the temperature. If the temperature, for example, is below freezing or in the freezing level, carbon monoxide is gonna be heavier than air. It's gonna fall down. There was a story of some guys working in a ditch in a cold weather during the winter. They had the generator running or the uh, air compressor running gas powered. The carbon monoxide came down, filled up the ditch, and they ended up dying. There's another scenario, though, where you're in a house, warmer conditions, carbon monoxide's lighter, so it's gonna rise up. So inside the house, if it's gonna be a typical 70 degree, 75 degree house, then you're gonna to wanna to have your carbon monoxide either body level or higher. So this way the carbon monoxide is gonna go up. I like about body level because this way you can see the display, you can see the, dis the readout. Um, there's an argument over whether you should put it at the top or eye level. Either way, have one of these, make sure you're protected. If it's gonna be in a workshop that's not heated or some condition where it's gonna be below freezing, at that point, then you'd want it down low. And again, make sure you have one of these. The more you have, the better. I had one of my customers that put one up top, one in the middle, and one down low to make sure they're protected. I have some customers that put these in all of their, their kids' rooms and their bedroom themselves. 
The more you have, the better, but at least make sure you have at least one low-level seal monitor to make sure that you're protected. The more, that's, that's better, so that's nice. But at least have just one of those. We'll make sure you're protected. And please learn more about CO. There's so much out there that, that we're learning. This book is full of information on it. Uh, I try to go through and review this every winter to get re-familiarized. It's amazing how much stuff you can forget. And things are changing. Technology, we're learning more and more about it. But learn about it. Get you an instrument to test for it. Be safe and have a great day.